Hey, welcome back to another episode of Whiskey Row. Well, you guys know that I do trades and sometimes people send me samples and I get other things in the mail. So I thought we'd do our first mail call video. I got one box to open tonight and, and, and it might be a short episode, but why not do it and give it a shot and see what happens. So I got this box. I haven't opened it yet. It's from Anthony in Disputanta, Virginia, which I think is down near Virginia Beach. Well, let's, let's open it up and see what Anthony sent me. Check that over here. So there's something in here. It looks like a sample, maybe. Hmm. It's a two-ounce sample. Anthony, thank you so much. Guys, this is this isn't just a regular sample that someone would send to somebody else. This is a little bit of a special sample. It's a Pappy Van Weekle 12 year. Okay, this isn't a mail call video. That was stupid. But anyway, the point is is that I have a Pappy Van Winkle 12 year sample from the lottery distribution that happened here in Virginia a couple months ago. Well, Anthony won. He was willing to send me a two ounce sample of it in exchange. I sent him some samples and we're gonna put it up against a bunch of other stuff and we're gonna find out if Pappy Van Winkle 12 is really worth the fuss. Now I have had Pappy 12 before. I had it up in New York in Manhattan at a restaurant. I paid $70 for an ounce and a half of Pappy in a glass. It was cool to check the box that I'd actually tasted a Pappy Van Winkle, but Frankly, it, it was just a, a good bourbon and it didn't change my life or it didn't ruin all other bourbons after it. I'm kind of interested to put it up tonight against a couple of things. And some are easier to get, like the makers. Others are not easier to get, or at least they're hard to get, but they're cheaper than the secondary on a Pappy. And, and then this, this other option here, which we're going we're gonna to talk about in a second. So there's a couple of questions that I want to answer tonight. One is, is Pappy Van Winkle... 12 that much better than some of these other weeded bourbon options. The second thing I want to answer is when put up in a five-way blind, will Pappy stand up to these? Can it beat them? And frankly, if it doesn't win, what's a better alternative? So I knew this bottle of Pappy 12 was coming my way. It actually has been sitting here for like a month, unopened, just waiting for me to get everything ready. One thing that I was really wanting to do was to get an old Fitz. And I was able to get one, so then now, you know, it's a weeded bourbon. So be, being able to put this weeded bourbon up against some of these other weeded bourbons was really important to me. But in preparation for this, I needed some better competition, some more direct competitors that we could put forward to compete against the Pappy 12. So I reached out to the folks on their Discord server and I talked to them about what I should put up against Pappy. So Keith from New York, who is always supporting the channel in such an amazing way, was able to get me a Weller 12 and send it down here. I paid him for it. Well, in addition to the Weller 12 for this competition, Keith was very kind enough to send me a poor man's Pappy that he blended 50-50 back in March of this year. So it's actually had a good while to sit because I, I mean, I could obviously pour one now with my Antique 107, my Weller 12, put them 50-50, but this has really been sitting for a while. So it's had a chance to really kind of those flavors to really blend together really well. Now, a poor man's pappy is a 50-50 blend of Weller 12 and Weller Antique 107. But when we were doing the old Fitz video, the Makers 101 stood up really, really well to the old fits better than some of the other weeded bourbon options I had like Old Elk and the Antique, uh, Weller Antique 107. So I'm incredibly grateful for all of you that helped me put this together. Anthony for the Pappy 12, uh, Papa Joe who helped uh, helps me hunt locally and, and we were hunting uh, the old fits together. Uh, Keith for the Poor Man's Pappy and the Weller 12. Now I know a lot of the videos I've been doing lately are double blinds with Jamie and I love it when she comes down to help, but I went old school back to the, the original five-way blinds with me putting the labels on the bottom with the names on them. We're gonna pour them on camera and then we're gonna mix them all up. You guys will know what I'm drinking, I won't. And we're gonna go, we're gonna do it old school today. So we have about two ounces uh, from each bottle or from each sample bottle, poured it in the glasses. The glasses are labeled on the bottom with some names, so I'll know what I'm drinking at the end. But let's mix these up. They are sufficiently mixed up. I do not know which is which. Let's get started. It's got hints of honey, butterscotch, some vanilla, some dry vanilla, and there's kind of a fruitiness on top of that, almost kind of like a raspberry fruitiness. Ever so subtle hint of a little bit of herbalness. But other than that, it's very, very mild and pleasant on the nose. That's a good bourbon. <laughs> That's a good bourbon. Okay, so on the palate, 
This is very mild. There's tons of sweetness on this, but it's not like a caramel vanilla sweetness. There's a touch of vanilla. There's kind of this honey butterscotch syrupy sweetness. It's really, really pleasant. It's a little touch of cinnamon, a little bit of an herbalness, but overall it blends really, really well together. This is a very good bourbon. You get touches of a hint of like some barrel char very subtly. It's got a good mouth coat. Finish is pretty good. And, and toward the end, it goes toward a little bit of a spice. It smells like honeysuckle, like the honeysuckle flower. If you were a little kid and you know, pick the honeysuckles and, and like taste them and smell. That's what it smells like. With some spice, there's like some baking spices underneath that honeysuckle. A sweet vanilla, a little bit of baking spices. Kind of reminds me of some dried fruit as well. It smells really good on the nose. I think the first one smelled a little bit better, but this one is quite nice as well. This one almost tasted like honeycomb. There's a good spice. I'm getting a lot more kind of barrel wood kind of taste than I was on the first one. It's got a little bit of proof. It's a little bit more fruit on the front of my palate than there was on the first one. Some cinnamon, some herbalness. Wow. This one smells really, really good. It smells like strawberry shortcake. <laughs> it's amazing. Like a creamy vanilla, touch of caramel, a little bit of an herbalness. It smells amazing. So this one is interesting because it has this, it's very wood forward on the palate. There's tons of sweetness, almost like cherry syrup. There's like a syrupy sweetness with like cherries or strawberries, like a red fruity kind of thing. But then behind that, there is a bit of like, a, almost like a barrel quality to it, a barrel age. There's a hint of some baking, so a hint of baking spices, very, very faint. And then a little bit of an herbalness. Mouthfeel on this one is pretty good. It's got a decent finish, but it has that really pronounced there's a really pronounced red berry on this one. This smells really, really good. There's like this nice butterscotch with honey and red berries, touch of herbal, an ever so small hint of cinnamon as well. It smells good though. I like the balance of this one. It has a really nice balance on the nose. Wow, this has like really good like tongue presence, good mouthfeel, like tongue tingly thing going on. It's a little bit spicier in a way. The cinnamon is a little bit more pronounced than, than any of the others. But you get a little bit of that wheat characteristic. Get a little red berries. Like I said, some spice. Cinnamon's turned up a little bit. Touch of herbalness. Just ever so faint. And a good sweetness. Good mouthfeel. It's got a good finish. It's a solid bourbon. Oh, wow. This by far has the best nose of the lot. Whatever one this one is, the nose is amazing. It has a little bit of kind of this red berry, strawberry. There's this nice sugary, creamy vanilla with a little bit of herbalness. I just got a little hint of peanut. I don't get it now, but I did for a second there. I wasn't, I'm not crazy. I know I got it. It smells so good though. On the palate, I definitely get a little bit of peanut, a good baking spice, a little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of herbalness. I'm trying to pick out what the sweetness is. The herbalness is a little bit strong on this one. What is that? It's got a decent mouthfeel, a decent finish. It's not exceptional in either cat, in either of those. The, the herbalness is almost overpowering on this one. That's interesting. All of these were almost like variants of the same. They're all very, very similar. This one's a little bit off. And I don't mean off in a bad way. It just means like flavor wise, these were all like brothers and sisters. And this was like a second cousin, if that makes any sense. Okay, we've gone through them once. This is an amazing competition. These are all really, really good. And I'm really interested to see which one's which because I would easily want to sip and drink any of these any given night. Like they're all very, very, very good. If I could get a bottle of every one of these, I would buy every one of them. Someone's gonna have to win, somebody's gonna have to lose. So I'm gonna go through and rank them now and when we come back, we'll put them on the pedestals. All right, we're ready to do this. Number five, number four, number three, number two, and number one. Now I've never had them line up like this before. One, two, three, four, five. I was actually a little nervous about that. And I went back through and I tasted them in different directions. I started in the middle, went down, went up. And I really wanted to make sure I had this right. Obviously, Pappy 12, Poor Man's Pappy, the Weller 12, Old Fitz 8, and the Maker's Mark. They're all quality product. I wanted to make sure I did this one right. Now, before we reveal what the bottles are and which is in which place, let me tell you what I think the outcome was going to be before this started. I would have said Old Fitz 8 was going to be number one. The Pappy 12 would be number two. Weller 12 would be number three, the poor man's pappy number four, and the makers number five. So I pulled the bottles down, including the two sample bottles, and I'll admit it, I feel like it's a little janky that I'm 
I'm rolling out with these little two ounce sample bottles in this. If I ever get really get my own bottle of Pappies, I'll do it again with this big, beautiful Pappy Van Winkle bottle. But until then, I guess we'll just live with the little sample bottles out here representing. All right, number five, Makers 101. Number four. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Pappy 12 is number four. Oh, number three, Weller 12. Number two, <laughs> Poor Man's Pappy. And number one, I'm hoping it's Old Fitz. Yeah, it's Old Fitz, okay. I may not be the guy with the best palette, but the outcome is the outcome, and I think it's hilarious. 101, it had this little bit of a peanut quality, which I've never, ever, ever tasted on Makers before. It's a Makers profile. But there's a hint of a peanut on there, which I don't, maybe it's because none of these have any peanut whatsoever. I had no idea this was the Pappy 12. It's so funny. It really is hilarious. It's hard to describe. It's good. It, and for this to come in fourth place against this competition is not a slide against Pappy 12. Don't get me wrong. If I ever could get a bottle of Pappy 12, God, I'm going to get a bottle of Pappy 12. But when I taste it up against the Weller 12, so same age, the 12 has a little bit more age characteristics, if that makes sense. It tastes a little older to me. And that berry forwardness that the Pappy has is a little more subdued and a little more palatable to me. Weller 12 tastes a little bit more well-balanced to me than the Pappy does. And the Weller 12 is fruit forward as well and has some of those same characteristics, but to me, it's a better balance. The Old Fitz is stellar. But to me, it's this really, really exceptionally well-balanced sipping bourbon. When we talk about weeded bourbons, you know, obviously the Weller and the Pappy are legendary examples of those. But the old fits, it just, it really is just stunningly well-balanced. But let's try these two because they always say this is the poor man's Pappy. So they call this the poor man's Pappy. But if you take a Weller 12 on secondary and then you mix it with a Weller 107 on secondary. Yes, it's cheaper than a Pappy 12. <laughs> but it's not cheap. That's a fortune. But let's try these two side by side. So on the nose, they're exceptionally similar. If I went and mixed them up, I do not know if I could tell the difference. Let's, let's taste them. They're really, really close. The Pappy is a little more berry forward, and the Poor Man's Pappy to me is a little more balanced. It brings a little bit more age characteristic in. It dials back that, that absolute berry forwardness, and it dials it back down just a little bit, and is more balanced to me. See, to me, the Weller 12 tastes older than the Pappy 12. I feel like the 107 in the Poor Man's Pappy dials down the age characteristics that you get on the 12, and uncovers a lot of the fruitiness inherent in the Weller 12. And the, and the Antique 107 obviously has a lot of those, those berry characteristics, in my opinion. They're both really good. They're very, very similar. I, I was really skeptical with the whole poor man Pappy concept, to be frank. I, I thought it was a bunch of crap. They're really close, and I'm surprised by that. I did not expect that. This was an exceptionally delicious battle. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you all for watching it. And until next time, find a bottle you love.